here we go. Hold your ears, folks. It's showtime. <laughs> In the future, Earth is ruled by Eternals. And advanced and secret. what I think it is. And the ad- Eternals. An advanced and secret sect of beings who reign over a savage group called Brutals. The Eternals have created a god named Zardoz to intimidate the Brutals, making them believe that killing is their natural state. However, Zed, a brutal warrior, challenges that assumption when he enters the Zardoz monument and is captured by an eternal there he learns the truth about the eternals and the false god that rules society all right so zardoz is a 1974 irish american science fantasy film and later a book written produced and directed by john borman all right starring of course as the the head brutal sean connery as zed and charlotte rampling and sarah kesselman Charlotte Rampling, if you've seen her now, because she's not attractive at all now, back in 1974, god damn it, she was fucking hot. All right, this movie is... <laughs> yes, because women that get older just stop looking pretty. Well, there's some women that have aged good. She looks like now, she just doesn't look like she aged well. It there's some She's got to be like 85. Uh, she's in her 70s, but... There's some women that have aged fucking pretty good, man. I, I mean, you know, I mean, they don't look bonable in their 70s, but they at least look like, you know, they they held up. <laughs> all right. All right. She looks like now at this age, like she's fought a few STDs in her time. <laughs> so, all right. <clears throat> this movie starts off with this um, this character named, um, oh God, the, the, pretty much the guy who plays Zardoz. It's, he's a disembodied head, and he's talking to the screen, and it's all exposition. He's explaining shit, which I found out was cut in. It was added into the movie because audiences didn't understand anything. And it, I totally understand, because you know what? If you didn't have some explanation at all, this movie would be like this weird, odd, clusterfuck art house movie that would only make sense to the makers if you didn't have any exposition at all. So it was actually important that that the Zardoz character spoke to the audience before the movie starts in a way. So, so after he explains the history, the, the brief history of the brutals and the eternals about, you know, this being in the future and shit like that, it starts showing this gigantic stone floating head and it's traveling through the sky. And I dude, this movie's made on like a $1.7 million budget back in 1974. Not bad. Holy shit. I, I, and this movie's in like HD that I watched it on when it was on, I think it was on Hulu. And it, the fact that they were able to cram all of the, the costumes and makeup and visual effects and sets in, and also paying, Oh, I, I believe half of it, half of the budget went to paying Sean Connery for being in it. Because apparently this was a couple years after he did the last role as, um, you know, James Bond and he wasn't getting roles. I mean, of course, he never, you know, never say never again. He did that like 10 years later, but I'm not counting that one. This is right after he did the, the, his initial run of James Bond. And yeah, he wasn't getting any roles because everyone was typecasting him as, as James Bond. So he signs on to this because they gave him this fat salary for it. And the whole movie, he's in a red bikini bottom and he's got two um, of those uh, bullet like shotgun shell um, rolls. I don't know what the fuck you call him, but he's uh, he has them, you know, around his arms and shoulders, and he's got this fucking mustache. Bandolier. Yeah, and he's got this mustache and his ponytail, and he looks like he looks like I guess Pancho Villa or some shit. It, it's just fucking hilarious. His character looks funny. So anyway, he's the head of these brutal guys, and this 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 giant stone head that's called Zardoz is floating through the sky, and it lands. And it lands in front of these brutals who are killing people, just randomly just shooting everyone who's not dressed like them. They all look like homeless people that they're killing. They, they're massacring. And the head starts talking to him about, it's just weird shit. The penis is bad. And the and and the gun is good. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, this, this big godly voice. And out of nowhere, all of a sudden, all these guns and shotgun shells 
just start flying out of the mouth of this thing, like almost like vomit, but you could tell there's just people behind the teeth throwing them out in groups, you know, and it, it's just so fucking funny looking. I started laughing when I'm watching this shit. I'm like, where is this going? Where is this fucking movie going? And and the and all of a sudden, after these guys get all these guns, all these brutals get these guns, it cuts to Connery waking up in a pile of wheat, ground up wheat inside the mouth of Zardoz. And now Zardoz has flown through this thing called the Vortex. Now it's in the land where the Eternals live. Okay, which is pretty much just a barrier. It's a barrier. It's a it's a it's a invisible barrier that keeps anyone from the land of the Brutals getting into the land of the Eternals. And so he wakes up in the head. He kills. Gar- I'm sorry, but it happens right at the beginning of the movie, so I don't give a shit. He kills Zardoz. If you haven't fucking seen it by now, I mean, it, it came out what almost 50 years ago. And so yeah, he kills Zardoz. He climbs out of the place and he starts going into these buildings and stuff. And you know, he finds you know. Of where these Eternals live, and then I, without me even, without them even conveying that they did it, they start controlling his mind to keep him from attacking them, which I didn't know because they don't. Like I said, the movie is kind of poor at conveying certain things. Like some things, it seems like, and this happens a lot in '70s movies. There's a lot left to the imagination. Like either if you've read the book, then you know what's going on, or, or you just have to be smart. <laughs> you have to be extremely intelligent to know what's going on without them telling you. And so, yeah, they, they, he doesn't attack them, which is weird, but there's a reason for it because I had to read about this movie after watching it because I'm when it was all said and done, I was partially confused by it because this movie tackles a bunch of different themes. You know, it's about aging and our place in the universe and the haves and the have-nots and, and uh, oh, God, just other things too. I You know, technology and... And stuff, and it, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to to take in. And I will tell you this: this movie does a lot of moments where it'll take go away from the action and the drama, and it'll do like these visual spectacle scenes with with you know um, split screen and 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 kaleidoscope type of uh, type of imagery and weird hallucinogenic type shit. And it, it kind of takes away from what you're trying to get from this movie, but when it's actually focusing on these characters and how weird they're acting and all these things, I was actually intrigued by it. I, I, this movie's got a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics. And I understand why, but at the same time, because I read the re, you know the partial reviews for it uh, from the time period, and I get it. I understand people being like, oh, it's overly artsy and, and confusing and shit. And you to a point, yes, absolutely. But... There is a fucking smart movie buried in this film. I mean, a very, very smart movie. It just seems like this movie itself couldn't tell it in a proper way overall. Like if this had been, if this gets like remade and told. Do you think there was a disconnect between the director and the writer? Um, no, actually, I don't. I think it. Uh, I think it was more like. There is only a certain amount of time to put in this movie what you do, and they spent too much time worrying about visual flair than explaining shit. Ah, okay. I think that's probably what the, the problem was. I, but I could totally see this. You get when someone, did this movie come out? Seventy four. Yeah. So before Star Wars and stuff like that. So you had more wild and wacky. You know. Right. Right. Like Logan's Run. Yeah, like Logan's Run. Like Logan's Run. Two thousand one. Yeah, it has something to say, right? about you know society and stuff right this movie has something to say and yeah. it's important it's, but it's in one of those weird places yeah and it's really weird and i could tell why it turned a lot of people off because it is weird there's a lot of shit you're like what the fuck and i think i've i haven't seen i think the only movie mainstream movie that i've seen that had more topless Sorry. nudity in it was maybe the uncensored version of showgirls <laughs> <laughs> more more topless nudity. Oh, there's more topless nudity in this film, more titties in this movie than a Corman film. Dude, just well, what about Porky's? More than Porky's. It makes Porky's look like fucking Babe Pig in the City or something, dude. It, it there's no you know what I mean? It there's sure. there, there's like tits in every scene in this movie. I'm like, this came out in 74? They they okay, sure. All mm-hmm. right. Yes, um, it did. Yeah, it definitely rated R. And and there's some, yeah, there's a couple of little rape scenes, but they're not overly rapey. They're not like like how movies nowadays would be more detailed and more violent. It's more 
Yeah, he, he raped her, but you can't. It, they don't show him fully rape. You know, it's so. It, I won't. I won't say. <laughs> I don't want to say it's tasteful rape. It's just they not, didn't show him fully rape her. It's but just hey, yeah. It's yeah. just not as visceral in its you know presentation, right? Right. Not not modern day. It's just pretty much you know that he did without it fucking burning your eyeballs, right? Right. So, but yeah, there's there's a fucking smart movie in here, and I I stayed interested the whole time, even when it was weirding me out with these weird things you know directions it would go where he's going through a hallucinogenic process where he's he's dealing with an, an, an ai computer system and he's stuck in this giant crystal and and or these people are doing these psychic control things with each other and and all the you know and the sect of of eternals where you know they don't age but yet if they if any of them do any kind of dissidence in the group they can they'll all vote against the person and they they can they can make them age just like in rick and morty yeah, they can make them age, but not kill them. Right. So they can make people super fucking elderly, but they still don't die, right? And if anyone accidentally gets killed somehow, they get resurrected into the same body again. It's it's a weird thing. They like I said, they don't fully explain it all. Like I said, it's this would be, I I would really be interested in seeing someone like Danny New um, Danny Villeneuve or someone else remaking this today. Quran. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remaking. <laughs> Sorry, remaking this today, but doing it um, maybe in a limited run series on on Netflix or something, where you do like I don't know five to ten episodes, where you can flesh out the story more, you can see the past and how it led to this, you know. And there's a big reveal of why it's called Zardoz, and once you find out why it's called Zardoz, it makes perfect sense, and you're like, oh shit, okay. So it's not a stupid name. Twist. Yeah. Plot twist. It's not a stupid name once you find out why it's called Zardoz. So it's fucking actually pretty cool. I was like, I was like. Hmm. <laughs> so, like I said, I thought this movie was going to be a piece of shit, and it turned out to be very interesting, weird, thought provoking, and entertaining. It's a seventies movie, yeah, and entertaining Most movies of the seventies. Whether you, I yeah. mean, we make fun of movies from the seventies, like um, oh, uh, I want to say not Network, um, the Taking a Pell on One Two Three. Okay, I've never seen the original. I've only seen the remake, and I'm trying to think, you know. Solemn Precinct 13. Modern, not modern problems, but some of the Chevy Chase movies, which are later 70s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Assault on Precinct 13. Um, not, But I'm not talking about hardcore, gritty drama yeah. stuff. I'm talking more about the comedies, you know, uh, Ordinary People, which... Uh, uh, Foul well, Play. <laughs> um, what was the one? Uh, Being There. With okay. Peter Sellers. Okay. I've which, never seen it, but I... Yeah, I've heard Holy it. crap, dude. It, you... It's it's like being there. It's really fucking good yeah. and tragic. It's one of those movies that you're just like you're real happy for them, and mm-hmm. then like, oh yeah. So I was <laughs> I, I would say my only two major complaints about this movie is that it spent too much time with the hallucinogenic imagery uh-huh. instead of better storytelling, instead of better exposition in a way. I wonder if that's where Hulu came from. Hulu, the TV show. I don't know. Who who hallucinogenic? Possibly Hulu. And um, and then also, I think Sean Connery was miscast. His accent fucking takes you out of the movie. And he doesn't have much to say. He really doesn't. For almost the entire movie, when he says something, it's barely anything. It just doesn't look right. His look doesn't look right. His voice doesn't sound right. Miscast. Okay. So, And I love Sean Connery. I do. I fucking love him, but not for him. Except for when he's beating women. <laughs> don't like it when he's doing that. Brings a knife to a gunfight. Yeah. The Untouchables. <laughs> we haven't even... 